Bonjour à tous. Je m'appelle Gary et je suis prof d'architecture à WIT, Waterford Institute of Technology. Et je suis aussi un vrai francophile. Pour cette raison, je suis particulièrement fier de Eileen Gray, une architecte irlandaise qui a passé la majeure partie de sa vie en France, où elle a apporté une contribution particulière à l'architecture moderne et en particulier à l'architecture moderne française. J'ai récemment fait une courte vidéo où j'ai essayé de décrire sa réalisation architecturale dans son œuvre la plus connue, une maison appelée E1027. Je suis très reconnaissant à l'Alliance française de Dublin de m'avoir donné cette occasion de partager ma vidéo avec vous dans le cadre de, de leur live broadcast series. J'espère que vous l'apprécierez. Eileen Gray designed the house in Roquebrune on the Mediterranean coast of France that we refer to as E1027. It's generally acknowledged that the design is principally hers, although some elements were apparently designed in collaboration with her partner Jean Badavici. When it was completed in 1929, it was one of the first houses, indeed one of the first of any type of building, representing in the modern style. The design is influenced by ideas that Le Corbusier had published in 1927, the so-called Five Points of Architecture. For example, Corbett said that the principal spaces in a building should be raised off the ground on what he called piloti, that enclosing walls should be freed from a structural role and treated as planes, and that windows should form a horizontal band along exterior walls. In a general sense, we can say that E1027 appears to follow these rules, and in this regard, it might be fair to say that it belongs to a set of buildings from the late 1920s and 1930s, which have a certain similarity of form. At least two of this group are by Le Corbusier himself. This one is a house he designed for his mother in the early 1920s, which, although it's not raised on piloti, does suggest the form of things to come. Here we have his design for a pair of houses in the Weissenhof estate, located in Stuttgart and built in 1927. Another in the group is the Villa Politzka, built in Prague in 1928 by Mart Stam. And then we have this house outside Milan, built in 1935 by Luigi Figini. And there are other buildings as well we could include in this group. Of these, perhaps Le Corbusier's own Weissenhof project is the most polished in appearance, on paper the most modern. But I would argue that in some significant ways, Gray's contribution is more sophisticated and maybe more advanced than Le Corbusier's. If we examine the sea-facing facade of E1027, it's evident that it's not really following one of Corb's rules at all, although it appears to be. Le Corbusier said that the external windows should be arranged in a horizontal band. But the horizontal element we see in E1027 is formed by canvas awnings, not by windows, and these awnings enclose a terrace. The actual wall of the house comprises a full-height folding glass door. The effect of this arrangement is that, when the door is fully open to the terrace, a new type of space is created. It's not quite a balcony, and it's not quite an extension of the living room. The new space is both inside and outside, and both at the same time, and it has a distinct character. If we follow this line of inquiry about this area of the building, we discover that any definition of the external wall should actually include both the glass door as well as the elements of the balcony awnings. In a way, they're all part of the same system. In my view, it's because of this, the fact that the external fabric of the building has a robust dimension and a presence, that the building feels so located in its site. In this particular instance, and there are other examples in the building, the site and the house are in a spatial dialogue. The dialogue is commenced on the point of climate control, but it results in the making of a space which has a particular quality. It may be that Le Corbusier noticed this as well, because it's at around this time that his designs begin to experiment in the area of engaging with climate. Le Corbusier is often credited with the creation of the modern Brie Soleil, 
a low-tech device for minimizing the effect of solar gain in modern buildings. Is it possible that he began thinking about the Brie Soleil after he visited E1027? There are other areas in which I think it's fair to say that Gray's design is superior to Corb's work of the period. Gray had started out in furniture design, and her furniture in E1027 is exquisite. Each piece is designed specifically for the house and brings a sense of completion to the work that Corb's buildings of the time thoroughly lack. And perhaps because of her mastery of lacquer work and carpet making, grey surfaces have a tactile quality and have about them a, a sense of depth and texture. They're always much more than a mere panel of colour. The plan has the finely honed quality that comes from thinking thoroughly and deeply about how the space will be experienced by the user. Small gestures are full of significance. Take, for example, the principal bedroom. This bedroom is directly beside the living area. However, in a spatial sense, it's both completely separate and completely complementary to the living space. This is because of how the entrance to the bedroom is handled. The entrance door might have been placed along this wall, but Gray chooses to partially conceal it in this niche instead. As a result, we're brought on a journey into the bedroom, which is now at a comfortable remove from the living room. Furthermore, the form of the living room is not compromised by the need to provide access to another space. I haven't touched on many of the little details that E1027 is famous for. The windows, the shutters, the roof light, the mirror, but they are covered extensively elsewhere. It's extraordinary that for such a tiny little building there's so much of interest to explore. It's a pity that its qualities are somehow shaded in the public's view by the spectre of Le Corbusier's personality, but that will change with time. Voilà, c'est mon petit hommage à la célèbre maison de Eileen Gray. J'espère que vous avez aimé. Merci d'avoir regardé. Merci encore une fois à l'Alliance française de Dublin de m'avoir invité à vous la montrer. J'espère que vous apprécierez le reste de la série. À bientôt.